What's up, people? Welcome back to the BCMA Podcast. That's the Black Clover Martial Arts Podcast. It's your boy, Lucky from Lucky's Muay Thai, and this is episode number 22. My brother got a deuce deuce, and it's loaded. Um, let me know if you know what movie that's from. Just dropped a movie quote out of nowhere. Um, if you like this show, make sure you elbow that subscribe button, keep the like, uh, share, drop us a comment below if you like the show. Um, you can hit us up or hit me up at Lucky's Muay Thai on Instagram if you want to drop me a line. Uh, you can also check out the gym. It's been going so well. Everybody's getting in shape. Everybody's running. Everybody's working really hard, hitting pads, doing all that stuff. We're keeping the classes small, but the classes are filling up. So we're having to add more classes, which is great. I'm excited about, you know, what's happening. And I hope that you can get it. If you're in Miami, you get a chance to stop by and uh, check out the gym. It's been, it's been really fun lately. Um, in this episode, I got my man, Gene Harding. He is a comedy headliner. Gene's been doing comedy for... I think in the interview, I was like nine years, but I think it's like 11 years. It's a great interview, but I couldn't remember anybody's name. I was trying to talk about some show back in the day with uh, Dr. Dre and Ed Lover, and I couldn't remember Dennis Leary's name. Um, it was just a lot of stuff I could not remember, but we had a great, uh, great conversation. Um, I hope that you enjoy it. But before we get there real quick, Khabib Nurmagomedov. I said that really badly. Khabib Nurmagomedov. Khabib Nurmagomedov. There you go proper uh, enunciation. Um, 29 and 0, decides to retire, said he promised his mother. Obviously, everybody, if you follow MMA, you know that his father passed away um, due to COVID-related uh, things. So, you know, obviously, you know, rest in peace. That was his, you know, his main guy. That was his coach. You know, it was his dad. And he got listed as the pound for pound number one. Obviously, people, some people took offense to it. Whatever. It is what it is, man. The guy did uh, an amazing thing. And everybody's, you know, this GOAT conversation is kind of crazy. But to me, people that accomplish things that nobody else has accomplished are GOATs in their own right, right? You're a GOAT in your own right. You've accomplished things that nobody else has accomplished in a way that nobody else did. And you sort of trailblazed, right? And you beat top names along the way to do it. Or you did something great like double champ or you did you know, the long undefeated, most in your division, undefeated streak, or you, whatever the case may be, sometimes you can become a goat in your own right. And, you know, I mean, everybody should just give the dude credit, let him ride off to the sunset. If he decides to come back, I don't need to see anything, but maybe him versus GSP. But I mean, the dude said he's done. So let, let him be done till he decides differently or he doesn't. Um, anyway, it was a fantastic showing by him. He proved with the triangle finish, right, and the transitions to me. He showed me that, man, he's even better than advertised, right? I think everybody expects certain things, but uh, he stood up with Iaquinta, right, and won some of those rounds 10-8. Um, he's fought with Barbosa. I mean, I, I just don't, I don't know... You know, I don't know what you can say bad about the people that he's fought. I don't know what you say bad about his career. I just, you know what, you know, salute Khabib bin I don't know if I said that right again. Anyway, um, let's get into it. This is my conversation with Gene Harding, uh, comedy headliner, my brother. We used to be co-workers back in the day. Make sure that you um, stick around and enjoy all of this because it's some gems in there. All right. I love y'all. Enjoy. Yo, welcome to the show, my man Gene Harding. This is my brother from another. Uh, my man has been doing comedy for nine plus years. Uh, he's a student of uh, Lux Muay Thai, uh, a former co-worker, and uh, he is a comedy headliner all around. So if you get a chance to check out Gene Harding, if he's in your area, make sure you do that. This is the man right here. Welcome to the show, Gene. Yo, what up, Luck? I'm chilling, brother. I'm chilling. How you doing? Yeah. Yo, um, so I don't know what platform this is going on. So whoever is listening to this, let me just break open right now and tell you this. This is dude, Lucky, right here. Um, This is why I rock with you. First of all, can we curse on this? You can do whatever you want. Then let's go. Let's go. Let's go. This dude right here, man. And I know I told you this before, but you already you already know knew it. Uh, This dude's character, like who you are, I'm telling you, is that's what I rock with. And if... If I thought you was a whack dude, I'd have seen you and be like, yo, what up? Oh, yeah, I remember we worked together, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't have sought you out to go to your gym. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have give a fuck. 
because I'd have just been like, whatever. And I, I'm getting to a place now where I don't really give a fuck about a lot of people. I, I'm, I'm okay to say that. I used right. to feel like I needed everybody. But this dude Lucky, I'm just telling you right now, I, you you one of the people that's, that remain a light in this dark shit. Oh, hey, my dog's going crazy. Hey, Joey, <laughs> yo, um, maybe he's like, yo, I agree. <laughs> yeah, I really appreciate it, man. I'm just trying to, um, I'm not just trying. I'm doing the things that I think are supposed to be the right things. You know, I feel like somebody, people in my life have said to me a long time, like, don't say, it's, it's everything's in your words, right? And people used to always tell me, some people, like, don't say trying to do, trying. Trying is like, that's for people that don't get it done, that it's too far away, that it's improbable and impossible. But just to say that you're doing, right? right? I don't have it. I can't do this. No, you just haven't done it yet, but you're doing it, right? So I don't know. I'm just trying try to be like that as much as I can, humble as much as I can. It's a gift and a curse. I, I didn't say nothing about being humble because you ain't that to me. <laughs> I am though. I am comparatively for people in this field. Oh, we'll talk. I mean, yeah, yeah. But yeah. Uh, I would. But I'm gonna just anybody that goes to this class, don't think you're gonna get this nice, warm person. He, he's, he's, he'll <laughs> do. <laughs> and, and, but me. you, but you do it in a way though that makes like we need it though. You yeah. know what I mean? We if 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 we all could do it by ourselves, then we do it by ourselves. We can just watch shit on YouTube and keep it moving. Right, look, but I need I'm, it too. I need yeah. it too. You right? probably get it, it though. You probably get it from giving it. That's exactly right, man. It's so okay. right. Yeah. Because I watch you in the class. I watch you with other people. And like, like you 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 don't back off. You don't you you give it because you've already assessed what they can do. Yeah. You've already assessed, oh, okay, I see what you can do. Cause you straight tell me, Gene, what I'll throw a punch, you'll be like, what's that? Now come on. Real talk, like we we doing this? <laughs> and I be sitting there, you be seeing my face up like this word, son. Yeah, <laughs> yo, people, yo, everybody's face when I see their face, they look at me on those days, especially yo. I'm like, man, if that person had a knife, I might be in trouble, yo. <laughs> well, yeah, but I, now I look at it like the face I be having when you when you check me on some shit. The face I be having when I look at you, right? It's 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 me looking in the mirror. Like, yeah, motherfucker, he's talking to you. Like, that's what I, I hope. I take it like that. And so the face I'm giving you, I'm giving me. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I'd be like, yeah, motherfucker, what kind of punch was that? And I come back, you know what I'm saying? So you do a lot for that that, that school, man. man I, I really appreciate it. appreciate it. I appreciate it, man. I appreciate you saying all that. It always, it's very, uh, yeah, I appreciate it, man. I'm not gonna, I can't stay on me, man. Cause it's a, it's a, that's a lot. I could just, I could go on and on, you know, but let me just say this for real. Yeah. Um, I didn't have that a mirror necessarily. I had a bunch of people that were really good friends of mine that helped me with training and all that stuff. But I wish I would have had somebody regularly there to tell me this or that. I had to do that myself. And that's why I take it so seriously when I'm telling people, because at some point it has to not be me. It has to be you telling yourself. Right. So I'm trying to set that bound that that sort of boundary with myself, like, yo, I'm telling you this, but after a few weeks. That's on you. We're moving on to other things and we can't move on if you're not making a conscious effort. That's my shit, conscious effort. So right. that means that's where it is. But anyway, yo, enough about me, bro. We got this. We're we trying to celebrate you today, bro. We <laughs> celebrate you today. Um, I celebrate every day. Yo, what was your word? What was your first uh, experience on stage? It's, that's an interesting question. Um, my very first time on stage was at the Hard Rock Improv in 09, right? And I'll tell you this right now. I would rather be in a, in a cage fighting the biggest dude than do that shit again. Like, I, I realized at that point in my life, I'd never experienced that kind of fear before. Yeah. Even, even if, I, if I was about to get jumped, if right. I was about, whatever was about to happen, I never experienced that kind of fear than that first time when I was getting on stage. And I had to bring a bunch of people because you couldn't get on stage without people in the audience, yeah, right? Yeah. So it's, you know, they call it bringing shows. So I told whoever I can, because I had to make sure people showed up, at least 10 people showed up. Um, so I get to the venue first and I'm chilling 
and I'm sitting there like I'm sweating. I'm like panicking every day. I'm just like dying inside. Like, yo, I'm terrified. Right. And I was about to be like, yo, go home, son. Would you, why, why are you putting yourself through this? Right. <laughs> like, just, <laughs> right. just go home. Yo, panic attack. Yo, I can't breathe. Yo. Word. Like, like, for real, like what you doing this for? Like you, you, you torturing yourself. Man, I know right? that and, feeling. And as I was about to really concede and be like, all right, man, just go home. People, uh, my people started coming from around the corner. They had already parked their car. They took off, took the night off and they excited and they rolled up. And I'm like, oh shit. I got like, and this is the gangster part. This is what I learned from that. I was about to let me down, right? Go home, get under the covers, and just just be like, this never happened. But then I saw other people that cared about me. And I'm like, yo, dude, you can't let them down. Right. And so I got on the stage and I fought my fears. I didn't really let it materialize into real shit till way later. But I had to realize, yo, you always making sure other people's good, but then you let yourself down. You know what I'm saying? I just, I let myself down. Like, ain't nobody looking. I don't got to go to the gym. I ain't got to right. do that extra rep. Nobody looking. Who cares? But you see it. Oh, I don't want to let him down. I don't let somebody else down. So I had to change that mindset. So now I care about, I have, I care about my own opinion. Can't love nobody saying? till you love yourself. You know what I'm saying? That's and that it took thing. me a while, though, son. It took me a while. Me too, man. Me too. It's tough, though, because, you know, I don't know where, I don't know your upbringing and stuff like that, but I feel like just in general, obviously we are not a monolith, but just in general, I think black men, whether we know it or not, have certain insecurities sort of built in us through our environment, things that we love, that we love, because we, we, we sort of uplift certain things. And then when we don't become those things, we think that the things that we're doing are lesser than, or man, I'm not, you know, I don't want to put myself out there like that. I mean, I think that's something beautiful to overcome and to recognize. And unfortunately, as, as you said, and, and for me, I'm older. So it's unfortunate that it takes us so long to finally get to that point. I wish we were taught at a younger age, you know, how to love ourselves more and appreciate ourselves more. Man, if we if we were at that place, would be a it would be a whole new Africa. Yes, <laughs> if I we always learn- tell people. I always tell people it's hard for inner city youth to to the reason why they there there's a lot of uh, murder or homicide or this kind of thing or beat beating jumping people or beating people up all that stuff is because it's you can't love somebody out there or appreciate or respect them if you don't have any value for your for yourself. They don't value themselves. They're not taught to appreciate themselves. So why would they care about somebody's grandmother or cousin? Or they don't care about those people. Got to got to teach our youth to love themselves right. a little better. Right. But anyway, go ahead. Sorry, I, man. Off on a tangent. And, and well, no, no, no. You good? Because that's exactly what what it is. Like you, like well, so when I got on that stage that first time, I know I didn't have love for myself. I didn't know that though. I, I got love from other people. Everybody told me I was great. I was just the only one that didn't know that. You know what I mean? And so that's right. where the fear was from. Like, I was panicking. Like, yo, dude, what are you doing? This ain't you. You ain't, you ain't good. Like, whatever. And then I go, uh, so I brought a lot of people. So I was able to pick the slot I wanted. So I, I was number five, right? There's probably like 17 comics. I was number five, right? So I got a good spot. I was going to say, that's a good, that's a good spot, yo. It was a dope spot, son, right? The dude that went up before me had already been doing comedy, so he just came to do a guest spot. And he he got on stage, and he, now it's packed out there, like 300 plus people, right? He gets on the stage, and he said, yo, um, I just moved to San Francisco. Growing up, I used to watch the Rice and Roni commercials, and they used to always talk about Rice and Roni was a San Francisco treat. I live there now. No, the San Francisco treat is cock. Yo, my dude. <laughs> yeah, when I tore tell it you, down. that place erupted. <laughs> yeah. Yo. Yeah. So now I'm on the side with that same fear, and I'm watching this dude murder, and I'm like, yo, dude, you really fucked up right now, man. You really messed up. Now right you gotta, gotta go up there and follow that. Now I gotta go up there and follow that. So I get on that stage, and this is this is when life changed for me. I get on that stage, I hear people screaming and hollering. They already in a good mate, good place. Then I got my peoples there, and the lights are in my face. For 0.2 seconds, I black out. 
Yeah, man. Yeah. I black out, my dude. And then I just grab the mic and then I just it just hits. I tell my, tell my first joke and it kills. And I'm like, oh, this is it? This is the fight? This is the shit I was afraid of? And now I'm in the ring. Now I'm just... And next thing you know, here I am. 11 years later. Now, like, I, now it still gets scary, but I ain't afraid to fight it. Right. And then I'm sure, you know, once you've done so much material and so much time, and so, you know, like, there are, I'm sure there are moments where you need, where you have, you can pull from other things that you've done and the experience yeah. matters, right? All of that stuff matters. It matters in fighting too, you know, same stuff. You know, the more you've done it, the more you have, you can pull from, right? To use it to your advantage, especially in situations where, you know, somebody's heckling or, you know, you got to know something with another comic that was taking too much time before you, or he was, he wanted more time after you. So you got to cut your, whatever it is, you right. can pull from those moments and those experiences in order to get through, man. I think that's beautiful. Well, let me tell you what I learned uh, since I started fighting. Um, I used to think this before, but now, you know, going to the gym, like I realized that I, I could tell when I meet certain people or when they do some dumb shit, I could tell, oh, you never been punched in the face. Right. I could, I could tell you, can tell. you, never, you never really got your jaw tapped one time. Because you acting, you you talking reckless, right? And I'm not saying if it's for me to do. I'm just saying. So when you fight, you you get a couple of kicks and blows, and you feel that pain. You know now how to approach the situation, and you Absolutely. be telling me all the time. And this is what I be forgetting. You always say, "Keep your hands up, keep your hands up," because I'll throw a punch, and his hand be down, and you be like, and I apply that to comedy. Like I keep my hands up, so even when I get heckled. I'm still doing my thing, but I got you. Like, I'm, it just. Yes. Like, yes. Shit. Yo, exactly. You know what I mean? I'm able to, I, I, I've been there before. So I don't know, man. It's, it's a, it's a beautiful marriage. Uh, me doing comedy and, and fighting. Like, and I can't wait till I get nice because like, I'm watching, I'm watching, uh, Brian Callen now just, Killing it on Kingdom. Yeah, right. Yo, I watched Kingdom too, and I was like, "Oh, look at that!" Yeah, comedian, comedian fighter. I'm like, there's "Oh, a, bro, there's a lot of people that train, man. A lot, a lot, a lot. You know, I ain't know Joe Diaz trained. Joe, yeah, man. Yeah, I he's been doing it forever, man. He came in years ago, doing wearing his karate gi, uh, doing comedy on YouTube and stuff. They were recording videos and stuff, man. He's been around for a long time. He's always trained some martial arts. I mean, from the time he was a kid, he tells all these stories, man. So, yeah, a lot of people train that you wouldn't expect, but I right. think it helps a lot, man. I think it helps a lot with mentality and understanding and, like, you know, also you can turn it up a little bit, too, if you need to and not feel like I am feel threatened by the other person. Like, if I need to get a little louder or if I need to make sure that they understand that I'm not, you know, just going to fall for the okie doke, I yeah. can do that and feel comfortable that, I'm not worried about them attacking me. You know what I mean? And if they do, then I'm prepared for that. I'm not trying to start a fight, but I will definitely let my point be made if it has to be. Right. right? And I'm not worried about repercussions. I'm not going to be rude and be an asshole, but I'm going right. to say what I need to say. And right. it makes you feel more comfortable, confident in yeah. yourself. So That's how it works for me on stage. Yeah, man. Yo, who? so when you started doing comp, right? So this is what I know for sure. When you start doing things that are like, going to be your life right there are a large majority of people it's not even that there's people that don't believe in you but there's a lot of people that are just eh, right they just don't they don't see it they don't understand they're like yeah good job man i'm proud of you but they don't really know but then there's somebody always at least one person that like truly believes in you and you tell them yo i'm gonna do stand up they're like all right yeah that's what you should be doing you know and every even when you you know crash and burn, yo, you have a terrible night or terrible run or whatever, and they still like, nah, man, you got to stick with it. Who was that? Is there somebody like that? Uh, I can't give that award to just one person because I'm so awesome. So I got... <laughs> <laughs> yo, you're fucking crazy, man. <laughs> yo, you're no. ridiculous. Yo, <laughs> no, but... um. I had different people in my life. Uh, some probably still in it. Some that just moved moved on. But that, but I've had dope people in my life t 
tell me like, yo, my dude, you can't stop you. I mean, and, and I, so I can't give it to one person per se, but I just remember times when I was, when I was ready to quit on everything on me, you know what I mean? Quit. Oh, yeah, no, I know. Like I used to be like, yo, what, why are you taking up space? Me? Like, what, which, why are you still breathing when somebody else could use this air? I used to think like that. And so I had dope people that used to be like, I mean, maybe girlfriends at the time or just people in my life, no one in particular that I can, you know, like I said, give that full credit to. But I had some dope people in my life that was like, yo, homie, I don't know when you're going to see it. Right. But I see it. And they were respected people, like people I should look up to. Like, yo, if you think I'm great, maybe there's something to it. Maybe there's something to it. It took me a long time. So now I believe it. Yeah, man. So yeah, that's what's up, man. I'm glad. I'm glad that we had to have this conversation, man. This this is great, yo. But it, it's not um, like you gonna not like you gonna ease up on me when I get to the gym tonight. No, nah, ease up <laughs> anyway. Yo, right. so here's here's one. If you were gonna do a buddy cop movie, who would it be with? I'm um, going with Mark Wahlberg. Are you serious, yo? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I yes. What did he do? He did. Uh, oh man, he did that uh, movie the, with Denzel. Uh, oh, with Denzel, I, I forget which one that was. Then he, but, then he did. Uh, he did some movie on Netflix, Spencer, oh, like the Spencer for Hire thing. Oh yeah, yeah I did. I did watch that. Spencer for Hire, yeah, I did watch. That. Oh, that's interesting, <laughs> Mark Wahlberg. Why? You know, why? you know why at all? Because first of all, he's still fit. Okay. Right, so I know we're gonna get a lot of action just because he looks like he still works out. That's one. Two, he is funny as hell. Did you see him in other guys? Yeah, 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 yeah. He's, he's funny. funny as hell. But that, I, that was I like, good. but I like that kind of like, I, and I feel, and then he was dope in Ted. And so when I watched that, when yeah. I when I saw Seth MacFarlane chose him to do the back and forth, I was like, oh yeah. So Mark Warburg would be my my guy. <laughs> That's tough, man. All right, I love it, who, man. You, who, who you had in mind? If I had to choose somebody to do a cop buddy movie with you, oh man, I don't know, right. man. I thought. See, I was thinking it would be another another. I know another brother comedian. You know what I'm saying? I don't know, Michael Jai White. Or something. I don't know, man. I don't oh, know. Wow. You know He's what I nice. mean? He's some, nice. It's some kind of buddy, buddy cop movie. Eddie Murphy, man. I don't know. You know what I mean? Right. Like, I, I mean, like another brother doing a, a. Yo, do you remember back in the day? Yo, what were the cats from from um, Young TV Raps? Uh, Ed Lover, Ed Lover, and and Dr. Dre. Remember they did that movie? They did a cop uh, movie. They had all the hip hop artists in it. It was called. Uh, I don't remember either. I don't have my oh my computer's uh, not here. Uh, Yo, that movie was funny. No, because no met met in met in what's the name did how high. Right. Met in Redman. No, it wasn't that high, high, but it was hilarious. The cop was a buddy cop movie. Yeah. And uh yeah. Wait, wasn't that oh it was Ed Lover, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, what's the what's the smoking comedian's name? Uh the scruffy voice. Oh my god, from He's from New York. He's not from Boston. Eddie, Eddie, not Eddie Griffin. No, no. White. What's the, the white dude? Damn, I'm forgetting everybody's name. Um, from smoking comedian? He's always cussing and smoking. Ron Wilson? Not, not Ron Wilson. Nah, but he was the cop, and he was always on uh, Ed Lover about, he was like a sergeant. He was always on Ed Lover about eating all the donuts. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. A fucking brother cop movie in the hood again, yo. It's okay. Like, but something so- funny, bro. Oh, so and I mean, I got some dudes that I would do that ain't make it yet. You know, yeah, man. I, got, I mean, that, I got some that's, dudes. That's, that, that's that the way to do. go. <laughs> I got some dudes that I would do with, but I, you know, the world don't know them yet. But that's a good idea. I'm a, I might have to think about something. I might have to write something. Yeah, man. So look, man. I don't. You know, I'm gonna always. This is a Wednesday. I try to have these ready by Friday, obviously, to put them out. Um, so where are you? This gets out before Saturday. Maybe we get some people over there on Saturday, but where where are you next week? Actually, my next show scheduled is for Monday. I'm at Bay Club, Miami. Uh, All right. I believe it's South Beach. 
But yep. uh, yeah, so Monday night I'm headlining. So if you find me on Instagram at Gene Harding, it tells all of that. And and everybody watching is Gene, not Jean, G E N E. No, Jean. Nah, see, there you go. You're from Haiti, right? I'm not at you're all. From, you're from Haiti. <laughs> I hate to break. I hate to break your heart. <laughs> yeah, bro. I get this. I get the same kind of stuff, man. Ain't, you not Haitian? Stuff. Huh? You not Haitian? No. Nah. Why you here so curly? Yo. <laughs> you know, it's me and you. I can't wait to see you, yo. I can't wait. Yo, what's your favorite uh, martial arts comedy movie? Before we get forward, finish this up. Com- martial arts comedy movie? To be honest, I used to laugh at Bruce Lee movies. Yeah. I used to yeah, laugh. I thought, I thought he had a character that, because they wasn't doing comedy movies like that, like that, but I, I was entertained by him. Yeah, a and lot, he had a lot you know of little. Saying? He had a lot of little one-liners and little moments. Words. You could tell just in, even you watch, you watch his interviews. You could, oh, you'd be like, oh, he funny. Like he got something with him. So yeah, I mean, Jackie Chan movies are cool, but he, he, they made him a cartoon. The, what saved him though is that he's really nice with the with the hands. He could fight. He's super nice. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that's what, and that's why. So like the rush hours, they were cool. Yeah. You know, but I used to like watching him and then hearing that he did his own stunts. Yeah, man. He's always done his own stunts and, you know, breaking legs and fingers and everything else. But he did also that Shanghai Noon and Shanghai Nights movie, like, which was basically yeah. rush hour in, in, right. uh, in, the, in the country or whatever it was. You right. know, so like they did the U.S. used him in that way. And I think that's kind of, I mean, maybe he, I don't know, man. He kind of wanted to be that. But, right. you know, we commercialized it a lot, a lot, a lot. You know, I remember interviews and he was at, they were asked, they were telling him, they were asking questions and he was like, yeah, I didn't know. They said they were going to do this. I didn't know what that meant. So he was just saying the lines that were written and like, you know. Right. What, what, um, what did he study? I think he did a lot, but I think he did, you know, like Kung Fu, Kung Fu. Kung or, you know, some kind of Kung Fu. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know. I don't, I just know he was in the, the Kung Fu movies back in the day. Oh, before he got big? Oh, he was he was a, he worked on Bruce Lee movies. And then he had those old Kung Fu movies with like the long hair and like Right, right, right. Yeah, man. He's always done comedy in in these movies. When he worked for Bruce Lee, he didn't do any he didn't have any parts. He was like extra fighting dude, you know, right. uh, stunt guy. And then right. he went on and started making like those Saturday morning Kung Fu movies. I gotta go look back and look that oh, up. Oh yeah, he's up. got a bunch, man. A bunch. And now he's got like, you know, I watch a lot of those movies the international joints and they're great, man. They're great. I mean, he's what's that a joint, funny dude. Uh, what's that joint? Ips. Uh, I, what's that? Ip man. Ip man. Ip man. Which one you like better? One there. or two? Huh? One. One. Cause I, 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 I don't remember two moving me like that, but one, you know, one caught me off guard. Right. Because the accent started early. Right. And From it was gate. really good mm-hmm. and funny. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go watch it again. It man. Yeah, man. Man put me on to that a couple years ago and I was like, I never heard of it. And then I watched it. There's so ever since Hitman Man came out, there's so much about Bruce Lee, like little documentaries here and there. There's all these different things because it brought light to it. It man, you know, being his one of his teachers and it brought light to that. And people wanted to put out a little bit more about younger Bruce Lee when he was around it, man, and all this. So yep. there's a lot of that stuff out there too. But Gene, my man, yo. What out of you, bro. No, for real, some real shit. We used to work together at uh, America's Backyard here in lovely <laughs> Fort Lauderdale. And, uh, you know, it was a crazy place. But I remember, you know, specifically you talking about how, how long ago was that? When we was working together, it was 12 years ago. And then com- comedy came like the year after. I, I hadn't even started comedy yet when I was working there. You were talking about comedy then. Mm-hmm. You were talking about comedy then. And I'm I'm just, I were, you know, I just remember, man, I'm just proud of you. I'm glad that you, you know, following what you wanted to do. I'm glad you didn't quit because like I tell every body, yo, don't quit. Even when your feet are like, even when your body, your mind's like, yo, I'm not doing anymore. Just keep your feet moving in the right direction. Right. Right. Even if you, you can say it in your head all you want. You just can't stop the actual momentum of it. Because, yo, you're going to have moments where you're like, yo, fuck this. I don't want to do this shit anymore. I'm tired. I'm tired of people. Whatever the situation is, 
But as long as your feet are still moving in the direction of what you want, then you're going to get there. And that's, you know, it, it's interesting that you say that because how many times like you'll be doing a workout and you'll be thinking about quitting. So you'll quit or you, know, you just take a break and then you look back and like those five, 10 seconds that you just sat down and chilled, you could have actually finished the shit and enjoyed that rest. But we, we just stop. So when you say that, and I'm gonna keep that in mind, those times when you make us do a hundred of some bullshit, you know what I'm saying? And I'm ready to quit. It's about and nutrition. I, yeah. Those are the moments that are most important to me that people don't know. Um, because I, I, you might hear me yell, it's you versus you in this moment. Mm. It has nothing to do with me. I, I just wrote a number, right? I'm not punching you while you're doing it. Nobody else is. There's nobody putting weights on your back or nobody right. like, it's nobody, it's just you. So when you're doing that and you feel like I got to quit, not you necessarily, or, I, or, you know, whatever the case may be. Yeah. Those are the important moments, the, some, some of the breakthrough moments, because those are the moments where you have the conversations with yourself that tell you, yo, don't, don't fucking stop. Why are you stopping? Yo, right. look, at this, look at her over there. She's going, he's going, you know, well, I got to keep going. Why am I stop? You know, that's when you have those conversations and those are breakthroughs, man. Yeah. Those are, break, those are training your brain to tell you not to stop. It's funny, um, I, me and you uh, working back at America's Backyard, back, this is back when you had dreads. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was, all that time while I was working there, I was trying to build up the nerve to start comedy. I, I was trying to build up the nerve to start fighting. Like, I was just, I kept telling myself, like, one day, one day, like, but when I put it out there to different people, you and my other friends, like y'all low key held me accountable. Cause y'all be like, yo man, when's your show? Like when, what's up? When you going, what up? When you, and I'll be like, Oh, well, like I, I think I said this shit too loud. I, I was thinking out loud. Like now people mm. was like, and but that's I, the key, man. That's right. the key, man. It starts at, that's the, uh, man. Look, the difference between myself, you and other people that are, are trying to do their own thing and find, shine their own light yeah. is that other people have similar ideas. They get the wake up. They're like, you know, drinking their coffee in the morning. Like, yo, I'm tired of working as the worker. I want to go be the boss of this fucking company. I know I do a better job as the manager. I know I'll be do a better, but then whatever it is that they that hits them, tells them to stop or tells them, ah, that's, you know, it's too much trouble, but kids, this, whatever it is, finish right. their coffee. They go right back on the assembly line or whatever it is. Just, just as an example. Right. So the difference is when you start, when you did that and you start putting it out in the universe, man, and saying it to people, whether you knew it or not, your subconscious or your conscious was telling the universe, I want this. And right. at some point, the universe said, all right, man, well, here it is. And you stepped to it and did it. And it was like, all right, well, this is a long road. So, you know, you're going to have ups and downs and all that. But you made that happen, right? That's that's right. making it happen, man, for real. And um, man, I'm proud, bro. I'm proud to have you at the gym. I'm proud to know that we talked so long ago and you mentioned comedy and I followed you and seen you doing this, that, and the other. And then now you are at a place where you're happy with yourself, you're headlining, you're feeling good. And yo, the world is um the world is in for a treat, my man. They're in for oh, a that's, treat, bro. That's the dope thing to say, man, because uh as Great as I am on stage, right? It it came from uh, a lot of reflection, a lot of I had to dig deep. So here's the funny part: a lot of people think that all comedians come from a dark place. They had fucked up lives and all that stuff. I found it hard for me in the beginning to do comedy because I didn't have that kind of life. I had a pretty dope life. You know what I mean? Like, I ain't have it hard. Both my parents was together. I had meals every day, had a roof over my head. I went to good schools. You know what I mean? I didn't, I didn't, uh, uh, you know, aside from a few fights in my life, I didn't get beat up. I didn't get bullied. You know what I'm saying? I chased the wrong chicks in my life, right? I mean, <laughs> they, they, it's gave inevitable. Me, they, they gave me the worst ass whoopings ever. Yeah. <laughs> But so I didn't have that. So, um, but I didn't realize this until way later. So when I got on stage, 
I didn't have nothing bad to write about. And, and there was nothing funny about being happy, right? right. I, I, I was just, I, I was a happy dude. I go to work, people rocked with me. But what I didn't realize was I wasn't really happy because I was lying to myself. I was lying to myself about a lot of things that I should have been doing, a lot of things I could be doing, even just in the workouts. I shorted myself in a lot of times when I could have done one more mile or I could have done one more round and I quit. So I used to, so I was lying to myself, like, cause I said it before, nobody else was watching. Like, you know, no, everybody still goes home and it's still just me. And I would just lie to myself. So when I stopped doing that and I had to go really deep and it's like, yo, Gene, what's holding you back? Why ain't you doing the shit you're supposed to be doing? And now that I'm taking those steps, like you said, and I keep my feet moving, it's coming to me. You got to see it. It's coming to me, man. Like the love, the the jokes, the adoration, it's all coming now. I'm just like, oh, all I have to do is stop and just go this way. Yeah, man. That's beautiful, bro. Beautiful, man. I'm Dude, I'm so stoked. And I'm so happy to have you on, bro. It really, really means a lot, man, for real. Like you have no idea. First of all, comedy is like, one of my first loves, um, just real quick, my uh, my uncles used to always listen to, you know, Red Fox and Rich Pryor. And, like, you know, I grew up on all of that stuff. And I would, you know, I had to watch Sanford the Sun every time. You big dummy Lamont. Like, I had to, like, you know. So, and then I got a chance when I was, like, 17, this dude that was at my high school was doing stand-up. So I got a chance to go do stand-up. I got, you know, some minutes, some minutes. I did pretty good. I was like, oh, shit, I'm kind of doing all right. And then the night I invited all my friends, boy, did I bomb the worst. I mean, I, ooh, I ain't shit. Bro, I couldn't wait to see that light flash. And I was like, yo, get me off of here now. It's almost like they was torturing, torturing me, yo. Was that the last time you did it, though? It, it was the last time I did it in that way because I was, I was an actor and I did improv and I did all of that. So I was doing commercials. I was doing everything back then. So I did improv since then, actually off Broadway, took some classes and did a couple of shows and stuff in New York uh, right. year, years ago. But yeah, I mean, I've been back on stage, but I hadn't been back on stage doing just straight stand up. I like wrote a one man show back in the day that I never did. I might like, have to call you up. No, I don't do that. I got no jokes now. Yo. All my jokes are like dad jokes, bro. They're the worst <laughs> jokes in the world. <laughs> I'm going to have to call you up. I'm going to nah, see you in the audience, but like, yo, coming to the stage. I'll be like, yo, I'm out, y'all. I'll catch y'all when it's over. I got to go to the bathroom, yo. <laughs> yo, I love you, brother, man. I'm love very, you. very proud of you. Thank you for coming on the show. My man, Gene Hardy, you can check him out at Monday at the Bay Club. He's headlining. Um, you have anything else you want to say, man? Tell them where to find you again, just in case they forgot. Uh, you can find me on um, Instagram, Facebook, Tinder. Um <laughs> Just look up Gene Harding, G-E-N-E Harding, H-A-R-D-I-N-G, Gene Harding. I'm everywhere. Yeah, that's the man, Gene Harding, on the BCMA podcast. Ah! My man. All right, so that was my conversation with Gene Harding, uh, comedy headliner. If you like the show, make sure you hit the subscribe, share with your friends. Um, you know, tell everybody about it, man, and drop me a comment anyway, just to let me know that you're watching and that you enjoy it. And um, if you want to come by the gym, you know the deal, www.luckysmt.com. Hit me up on Instagram, at Lucky's Muay Thai. And I'll be back next week with another show and another show and another show. And maybe a technique video if I can ever lock Jacob down to a time. All right. I love y'all. Peace. You know the deal. Ah.